Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cowboy Judge Show. More excitement, man. I love this stuff. We get some fun. You are not kidding. Speaker Pro Tem, Missouri House, John Weeman here with us. John, how we good to see you, to you again. Here Thanks you for are. having me here. Appreciate Holy it. Holy cats, you ain't kidding. And what, uh, you know, the political climate now, I guess more so than really any time before, uh, you know, our presidential antics and things have been going along, probably putting a spotlight on everybody all the way down, you know, through the uh, house and local and municipalities and all that stuff. Uh, how are you doing out there or down there in Jeff City? You know, I've been down there for four years. I guess I'm now a career politician. Been there for a whole four years, going into my <laughs> fifth year. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. I, you know, there's there's times when it, it can be a little challenging, but for me, I, I like doing it. People ask me, do you like doing this? And I say, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. And so, you know, it's always exciting when we're in session. There's always things. I always, I always caution people, well, be careful when we're down in Jefferson City because that means the, we, can, we can do good things. We can also do bad things. But uh, uh, we're, we're, we're just finished up uh, kind of halfway through the season where we had spring break last week. And now we're, we went back into session this full week. And so things are back in action. And really, this, the second portion of session is where a lot of things start to happen because people are starting to feel the sense of urgency to get their bills done. And the Senate starts sending us bills over from their side. We start sending bills over to their side. And so it gets pretty exciting in the second half of session. But effectively, the vice president of the yeah, is that, kind, that's kind of, of that's, the yeah, that's that's the you know second in command at the in the house. So but it's have, more than that, really, right? You're because uh, the speaker is so much. Uh, I guess Elijah Har, correct. Uh, as far as I've ever been taught, is so much in control of what legislation sees the light of day, right? And I guess as the pro tem, you probably are the left right hand man helping every minute of that, right? Yeah, you know, there's really three players in the House of Representatives. You have the Speaker of the House. You have the speaker pro tem which is the the next in, in line and then you have the majority floor leader and believe it or not the floor leader actually has quite a bit of power because that person controls what happens on the floor what bills are brought up onto the floor so that person in, in conjunction with the speaker have quite a bit of control over over legislation the speaker pro tem really is just kind of there to serve in, in, in place of the speaker when he's unable to serve on the dais or he's not there or well, one day he was out of out of town and, and I ran the show that day so it just we work together as a team all three of us and then there's other players there's other leadership positions there's a majority floor uh, uh, whip there's a caucus chair there's there's other leadership positions but for the most part you know the speaker speaker pro tem and the floor leader are the the three main leaders within the the house of representatives and you don't you don't accidentally fall into that position. I guess you're voted no. on that by your colleagues in your caucus, right? That is uh, which correct. is the Republican caucus in your case, right? Right. And um, you know they say Spider-Man style. You know, with great power comes great responsibility and stuff. Do you do you feel that weight every day, or uh? you certainly you know that you you not only have your responsibility of the people that elected you to represent um, them in, in the in the legislature. Uh, but you have a responsibility to your caucus members, to the Republican uh, members of the caucus. You have a responsibility to them to make sure that they're help, you're helping them out. If they have problems or, or concerns or they need something done, you know, you try to, you feel a sense of uh, obligation to try to help them. That's what I ran on. I ran on the, the, the platform that I was going to help be an advocate for House members over in the Senate. And w when legislation got over to the Senate, that I was going to go over and, and help advocate for them. And that's what I intend to do and will do. And, um, you know, the leadership, we do our best to try to provide leadership and provide some guidance. But ultimately, you know, there's 163 of us down there and there's 116 of us that are on the one, one party and the other 47 are in the other party. And uh, we all have to work together and try to put together, um, you know, compromises on legislation and, and then get it over to the Senate. And then it starts all over again. And I guess nobody's worried about your Republican chops. I got to. Some images here of you. Uh, were, were you president of the pachyderms across the country? Yeah. Is that what you were at one point? Yeah, most people don't even know what the pachyderm clubs are. It's basically a civic. <laughs> it's a civic club. Okay. It's kind of similar to like Lions Club or or the Kiwanis, but it's geared towards um, politics and it's geared towards Republican um, politics. And it was it was actually started in Missouri by a gentleman named George Parker, who's now deceased. He's part of the Great Generation. Uh, George Parker, Parker founded the Packerdom Club and, and it's grown to be all over the country and uh, I was fortunate enough when I was a young man in college I got affiliated with the Packerdoms 
And then just over the years, I was involved with them at the national level and was fortunate enough to serve as national president of the Pachydermis for about six, almost seven years. And it's a play on, because uh, the elephant is the GOP party's right. kind of mascot, right. and a Pachyderm is what rhinos are and right. uh, elephants are, thick-skinned uh, Animals hooved or animals, four legged, yeah, yeah hooved <laughs> animals or whichever. So, but yeah, I've been to many a pachyderm meeting, and uh, a lot of times it seems like it, most of the ones I've been to, the age skews about it, you know, 77 average at your attendance. Yeah. That's not always the case, I guess. No, well, I, it's funny, kind of a funny story. I was down in Texas, I went down there to meet with the national or with the state party chair of the Republican Party in Texas, and when I was president, and uh, we, we get in the meeting, and the guy that was introducing me was the was also on the board of directors, and he was an older, older, older attorney, and and uh, knew knew the party chair really well, and and so he introduced me as the president of the National Packers, and the guy says, "You're the youngest Packer I've ever met." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking because I was I was in my mid forties, you right, know, I right. kind of feel like well, he was, you know. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, yeah. really, I mean, you can't turn a blind eye. I mean, you, you go to one of the Golden Corral uh, meetings and. You know, it is. Uh, there's three or four canes leaning against the wall. There's no doubt. Yeah, that's that's been the challenge. And I, I always hear that question: like, what do we do to get younger people engaged in the political process? And and I tell them, I I always say, well, first off, do you have children? And they'll say, well, yeah, I have, I have some kids. And I say, or, or if they're older, I said, do you have grandkids or or kids? And they'll say, yeah. I said, well, what are you doing to get your kids to involved in the political process? It starts with you. It starts at home. You know, my parents were very involved in politics. So when I was very young, I I was exposed to that. My dad ran for state senate when I was in my, and I helped him run his campaign when I was in my mid twenty or oh. early twenties, and you know was involved with the state party. And so I got exposed to it early on. And if if other kids were exposed to that early on, I think there'd be more more people involved in the political process. My interest in this is a little bit about how is this process done, and you hear it's tenuous. Uh, one of my mentors talked about there's two things you don't want to ever watch being make, made, right? Sausage and laws, right? And, and just to hear some of the, what's going on behind the scenes there that most people are completely oblivious to. They have no idea about He all can't the tell you that. <laughs> He's not going to tell you what goes or, on behind the scenes. When well, we swear we're supposed to keep the secrets of the house. Right, right. Right. Well, I'm just saying, the, give me the process <laughs> that goes through that. And is it, is it like anything else, it seems? I, I, I've done sales for years. I've been a technical guy for years. Is it all about the relationships that you have and these relationships that come through the committees and the different groups and one's from one side of the aisle and one from the other and they've got to find a way to hammer through these things. But if you don't like the guy, you don't know the guy, how much does that have to do with it? Well, you, you, you said the key word, relationships. And, you know, it's easy to say that. It's easy when you get down to, to Jefferson City as a freshman legislator, you'll hear all the, the uh, folks will come in and say, well, you know, it's, it's about relationships. And I always say it's, that talk is cheap. Um, but doing it, actually building those relationships takes hard work. And sure. it takes takes a long period of time to build up those relationships. And unfortunately, with term limits now, we have eight years. I can only serve eight years in the legislature in the House, and I can serve another eight years in the Senate if I, if I run for the Senate. So that's a maximum of 16 years. We used to have politicians, which I don't necessarily agree with, that were in politics or in, in elected office for 30, 40 years. And that's almost too long. But but building those relationships with individuals in your party and in the other party and in the other chamber are critical because there's going to become times when you're going to need somebody to help you out. When you have some legislation that might be a little sticky, might be a little tough. And, and if you have a relationship, it's easier for someone to want to vote for you if they like you than if they don't like you. Right. If and they don't saying, like you, the thing, if they so don't arbitrary. like you, they're like, you know what, I don't like that guy. He's kind of a jerk. I think I'm just going to vote against this bill because he's. I don't like him. It's, a, oh, it's, we've, it's we've nothing seen. to do whether the bill's a good good piece of legislation or not. <laughs> it's because they don't like you. Yeah, did we see that with Obamacare? <laughs> and, and McCain just did not like Trump, and they would have yeah. been able to do what they were trying so to do. So it, it, it is all about relationships, and that's in business and anything else. You, you want to, you know, your ward is your bond. So when I tell somebody I'm going to do something down in Jefferson City or anywhere else, I do my darnest to keep my word because I don't want to have the reputation of, oh, well, you can't trust him. He, you know, he, you can't trust what he says. Mm -hmm. right. Tell you one thing and, and do another. You know, it's, it's, that's, that's important. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's the, the, the piece that I think is, Mike, you're pretty heavily involved and follow this stuff. I mean, you're a judge. Uh, I'm just the average American guy, kind of with my tangent on Very life. average. V very yeah. average. No, I just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> totally joking. Well, I mean, just for the uh, it, uh, people would never say that from the person, but what I do is kind of 
off the wall a little bit, but I, I try to draw attention to the important things, and right. that's what the whole point is. But I, as a as a regular human in our culture, going, I don't know what the process is. How do these things get done? And why are some decisions made? And how the heck did that thing happen? That should have never been allowed. How do you fit in? Is that where the battles go on? Well, yeah. a good example might be you've got that municipal transparency legislation you're kind of shepherding through right now, and I guess you're looking for a relationship on the other side of the. Um, House or whichever, the Senate over there, to have somebody help mirror the bill or something? Yeah, Maybe you can just absolutely. give us a little one-on-one -on, -one on how that's going. Yeah, around. I'm carrying a piece of legislation right now that, um, you know, basically is requiring cities, municipalities, to uh, provide their financial information to the state of Missouri uh, so we can put it online. And, you know, you'd think that, that would be a pretty easy thing, you know, government transparency <laughs> and making it open to the citizens. and. And you'd be surprised on how many people were opposed to it because they're, <laughs> you know, change is always difficult. People don't like change at all right. levels, and anytime you're wanting to change something, they they tend to resist it. Especially and when you're pulling the curtain back. Especially when you're trying to I expose say, so you know, now something people are going, that maybe. Wait a minute, that restaurant dinner was actually right. And so that's been somewhat of a challenge. I mean, I I have lots of supporters. We actually perfected the bill this week, and uh, we will probably get it sent over to the Senate sometime next week. And that's been a that's been a pretty good problem. I've had to do a lot of work. I had to do I had to make compromise. I know it's a dirty word to say compromise, but I really initially I had that bill. It was written to be it was it was going to be mandatory that all cities had to do it, and if they didn't do it, they were going to get fined. And so I get it into the local government committee, and there was quite a few Republicans that were former mayors, former city council people, and they're like. I don't think I can sell this back home. I don't think I can get you know, my local people to support right. this. And I said, well, what can we do to make it make it to where you can you can go along with this? Because this is a good idea. We we all agree that transparency is a good sure. idea. And so finally, I actually got a, the idea from another gentleman who was giving testimony against my bill. He said, well, a lot of uh, other states make it voluntary. I said, perfect. We'll make it voluntary. So I actually compromised and said, we'll change it from mandatory to voluntary. And once we did that, it, it passed out of the local government. It's a strategy there that here are the municipalities yeah. that are giving their information, and here's the ones that aren't. Correct. And we're going to start saying, oh, well, why do we look like we don't want to contribute? Right. Good strategy. I like that. So this is part of what goes on. So that's what developing. that's part of the, that's what happens a lot down in Jefferson City and in, in, in Washington D.C. That is behind the scenes negotiations. Okay, hey, we want this. And there's some people say you, you have that you have that line you know the line in the sand that you won't cross, um, and there are certain beliefs that I have, core values that I have that you know I, I'm a firm believer in life, uh, I'm a firm believer in defending our rights and in, and in, in liberties and in, in protecting uh, the Constitution, and as long as we don't get beyond those, uh, I'm willing to have a discussion and and and. And if we can come to an agreement, then I'm willing to do that. We've only got about a, a little over a minute left here. Tell us the direction we're going, the things that have happened in the past. Are we on the right path? Are things going to get straight in this country? Are, are, are things going the wrong direction and there's no return? What do you think we're, we're doing now? Well, I try to be optimistic. I mean, if you look at the polling data uh, across the country, and, and I think Missouri is in better better position than, than at the national level as far as from a political standpoint. Right. Uh, we, we are, our whole entire state, uh, the legislature is controlled by Republicans, the governor, the executive branch. I mean, the, the judiciary branch is kind of a, well, that's a whole other story. But um, at the national level, the, the most people still believe that the country is not heading in the right direction. I mean, if you all see all the polling data, it's it's not good, and I think a lot of it's just the tone, the civility of our nation has gone down tremendously. And I I try to emphasize that a lot uh, in the in the chamber in Jefferson City. Let's be civil, you know. Stop calling each other names. Uh, the name calling I think is not not appropriate, not not necessary, and all it does is it tears down relationships. Right. And so I think we need to we need to focus on it as a country becoming more civil. Well, it's okay to agree, just don't be disagreeable, and and don't don't be uh, someone who is who's just so much trying to throw the flames right. into the fire, you know, fire yeah. into the flames. Well, I mean, all kinds of stuff. I wish you could stay here all day, I'll tell you. I wish you'd throw more things at me, too. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I divided the tension. There you let's, go. Yeah, let's focus on the thing to, to change the world, and this is where it starts. And so, it yeah. does. The higher echelons of the uh, House, the um, 
type of people that we have, like you helping us get through it, I bet we might even have a good chance yeah. of making it. But John Weeman, thank you for coming. Yes, thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Mike's my constituent, too, on top of that. Well, yeah. say hi to Linda for me. I'll do we appreciate that. you guys doing a great show. Hey, everybody, thanks for staying tuned in here. This is the Cowboy Judge Show. Good show. And I'll say giddy up instead of you. Yeah, say it. Giddy up! Giddy up! <laughs> <laughs> thanks, All right.